Here I am in fritzing and I've got my Raspberry Pi already on my breadboard. I'm going to go and grab the buzzer. I'm going to go to the right hand side where it says parts and scroll all the way to the top until you see the search bar. You can just type buzzer or you can go through and find it yourself. It's entirely up to you. I'm then going to grab the first one I see to be fair. Anyone with um, two pins is fine for me. I'm going to grab that, drag it onto my circuit diagram, let's say. I'm going to flip this round and to do that I go to the bottom of the screen where you have that red bar, click on rotate, the rotate arrow, and I'm going to rotate mine 180, have it turn around the other way. I'm going to connect mine to pin 15, well sorry, pin 20, but GPIO 15 of the Raspberry Pi Pico simply because it's just a nice way for me to link it up, it's easy, that's it. I'm going to zoom in and move that up a bit. I'm going to click and drag all the way down until the red connects to my pin. And I'm going to do the same thing for the ground. Now the ground is a bit closer, so that's just there. But no ground pin has been connected yet. I can use any one of the ground pins from the Raspberry Pi Pico, but the easiest one for me to use is pin 3. I remember pin 3's ground, so I'm going to go back to my uh, diagram just to confirm everything I've done. So let's open that. Let's have my diagram open right next to it as well. Let's shrink this down a bit. All right, cool. So if I zoom in, we can see that GPIO 15 is actually that last one there. It's pin 20, but GPIO 15. And ground pin, if I go all the way over, pin 3 is ground. So 1, 2, 3 is ground. And I connect it to that bottom rail. So that entire rail at the bottom becomes ground. And that's it circuit finished i can close this i'm going to now save this i'm going to i'm not going to do a document for this one because it's a pretty simple one i'm going to jump straight to my breadboard and build it this is the breadboard i'm going to be using this time and as you can see on my computer screen and on the raspberry pi pico in my hand here these look very very similar so one of the reasons i put my breadboard on this side and i put it on the same side on the software fritzing is so that it's just easy for me to work with so as you can see from pin 20 on the Raspberry Pi Pico, so that very last one there connected to the yellow wire, that goes into the positive of uh, the buzzer. And the second part of the buzzer goes from the buzzer there all the way down to pin 3 of the Raspberry Pi. So circuit built, circuit connected. That's it. There's actually nothing else to do. So I'm going to open a Thunny now and I'm going to program it. So I'm going to go here, open Thunny. So let me explain everything that's going on here like I always do. Import U-Time so I can sleep later on. I can pause my program and have some outputs that's not moving too quickly. From a machine, import pin. So from the machine library, I'm going to import pin functionality. And pin functionality is going to allow me again to um, attach external components that could be input devices or output devices. Variable name buzzer is equal to pin 15 and it's going to be an output, so I say pin out. Now, the, again, this variable name can be anything. I can call this sound device, uh, A, I, I can call this anything. I call it buzzer just because it's a lot easier to work with and it's a sensible name. Now, down here, I have a while one. This, is, this creates an infinite loop to run forever. The same thing can be done with while true. Some people do while true, some people do while one. All right, first things first, I say buzzer, go high. So this turns the buzzer on. I say utime.sleep1, this lets it sleep for one second, so the buzzer is going to be on for roughly one second. Then I say buzzer low, and it turns the buzzer off, and I say sleep for one second again, so utime.sleep, and that pauses the program for an extra one second. So what should happen when I run this is that it's going to go on for a second, then off, then on and off for a second, keep going back and forth, and because it's in an infinite while loop, there is no stop condition whatsoever, this should just run forever and ever and ever. So let me press F, let me actually go to run on my uh, keyboard here, on my screen here. Might be a good idea to connect the Raspberry Pi. That's something that I should probably do. There we go. That's now connected. And I'm going to click down here just to refresh the connection. And there we go. I'm going to press F5 on my keyboard now.
you should be able to hear the sound from the buzzer beeping and that's it it beeps every one second goes on goes off goes on goes off and that's all the functionality i've done there so that's how we connect a buzzer to the raspberry pi pico let me stop this please keep in mind that the pin that you use for this doesn't have to be pin 15 it could be whatever pin you want i just chose 15 because it was easy for me to work with and later on i'm going to actually attach that same buzzer to this circuit here with my leds and i'm going to have the green led turn on when it's warm enough the red led turn on when it's too cold the buzzer is supposed to also go on when it's cold and i'm also going to have the temperature on screen at some point so that's why i've just left it at pin 15 so that later on is going to be easy for me but whatever programmable pin whatever gp pin you want to use that's perfectly fine all right thanks for watching hopefully that was useful